here in the North Side Baptist Church in Athens, Georgia. Appreciate your presence and to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience. We most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the North Side Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium. We're looking forward to a good hour together. And you out in the radio listening audience, if you get on your phone line, call or shut in a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour coming up. I do believe we can be an inspiration to them, be doing them a favor as well as us. We appreciate it so very much. Now, this is Preacher Edwards speaking. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to two places in the Word of God. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 22 and then turn to Matthew chapter 23. Now, this cassette tape is tape number 163. The tape is available for a gift of $3 to help take care of the radio expense. You'll have all the singing today and the message on cassette tape. It can be a blessing to you there in your home, in the hospital, convalescent home, prison, or wherever you might want to get the cassette tape and play it. Many of you good people out in the radio listen audience, you ought to get you a good cassette tape tape player and get some of these tape that can be a blessing to you. Maybe some of you wondering what to give mother and dad for a birthday or some special occasion. A real good tape recorder where they can listen to good gospel preaching and music would be something wonderful for them. And so you can write in and get the tape. We'd be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape at your request. Just write in and request it. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards. P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now today, I'm speaking on somewhat a strange subject. I'm speaking on the barnyard rooster, mother hen, and the little chicks. I want to read from God's Word found in Luke chapter 22. Turn there, will you please? Luke chapter 22. I'll read the verses 31 through 34. And that's found on page 1108 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Verses 31 through 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brothering. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Now look at verse 60 of the same chapter. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. Now Jesus told Simon Peter that before the rooster crowed, he'd deny him three times, and he did exactly that. Now in Matthew chapter 23... I want to read verses 37 through 39. Matthew chapter 23, uh, page 1032 is where I'm reading. Verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which is said unto thee, How often I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her children, un a chicken rather, under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now we're going to talk about chickens today. You know what a chicken is, don't you? If you were born or reared out on the farm, while well, most of you eating chicken, you know what it's all about. And so we're talking about the barnyard rooster, the mother hen, and the little chicks. There's a man one time, a very poor farmer. He didn't know how to do anything much to make a living. He is too slow to catch a coal. He's too poor to pay attention. And uh, the land he worked on was so poor that he couldn't raise his voice on it. And he wondered what in the world to do to make a living. Someone suggested that he go in the chicken and eggs business. And so he got him a little money and went out and bought him 25 roosters and a hen so he could get started in the chicken and egg business. Now some people don't know hardly how to do anything, do they? But as we bring the message today on the old barnyard rooster and the old mother hen and the little chicks, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Two little boys were out in the yard playing one day, and one little boy said to the other, said, I bet I can tell you what you had for breakfast this morning. He said, I bet you can't. 
I said, I bet you I can. He said, what do you think I had for breakfast? He said, you had eggs for breakfast. I see them all over your mouth. He said, no, I had them yesterday morning. And so we need to realize that God, whenever he gave messages and used illustrations in the Bible, that he brought it right down to the earth where we could all understand and get some help from these things. And the Lord mentioned the old barnyard rooster and the old mother hen and the little chick. So you follow me closely in the message. Listen to me and let me do the talking now. And then you can do the talking after I get through today. And I think that's fair enough. First of all, I want to mention the old barnyard rooster. Now that old barnyard rooster had a job to do and he did his job. Now several years ago, I was over in Israel and we went to the house of Simon Peter there where he denied the Lord. And I was standing there on the porch and looking out in the yard and I saw an old rooster strutting around out there. And this thought came to me. I wonder if he's a descendant of the rooster that crowed and brought Simon Peter to tears. Now he may have been. He may have been a descendant of that very rooster. Someone said uh, an old rooster walking around in the yard one day and had his head up in the air and strutting around and the preacher had come that day and had lunch with these people and, and the preacher said to the farmer, said, you know, that's the most strutting rooster I've ever seen. He acts like he's somebody. He said, well, he is because he realizes that he just had a son put in the ministry. Don't you remember you eat his son a moment ago? And he has a son in the ministry. He has a right to strut around. But anyway, there's several things about this rooster. Number one, he did what he could. Now Jesus said the rooster would crow. He told Simon Peter there. He barked like a dog. That had been terrible, wouldn't it? If a rooster to try to bark like a dog. He didn't try to sing like a canary. He didn't try to talk like a parrot. But he crowed like a rooster. And that's exactly what God wanted him to do. God told that rooster at a special time, I want you to crow. I have a Baptist preacher that's denied that he knew me, denied that he was my disciple. And I told that Baptist preacher that before the rooster crowed, he would deny me. And so he's denied me. And in due time, God said to that barnyard rooster, I want you to crow. And in due time, he did what he could do. And that's all God expected out of him, just to do what he could. Now, that's all God expects out of you, is to do what you can. That rooster crowed. Number two, his job was not considered important by the world. You don't hear many people bragging about a rooster crowing, do you? Sometimes they used to have rooster fights before they outlawed it. Uh, but you don't hear anything, anybody say, well, that's... That's a wonderful crowing rooster. I just want you to hear him crow. He, he's wonderful. He has such a wonderful voice. And I want you to listen to him. You ever hear anybody say that? I never have. I've heard some young roosters when I was a little boy that tried to start out crowing and make a terrible sound. And my daddy said he ought to have his neck ranged off. Uh, he don't know how to crow. He ought to wait until he gets a little older before he starts trying to crow. But anyway, you don't hear people bragging, bragging about a rooster crowing. His crowing was not highly esteemed by the world. His crowing was uh, uh, usually not even noticed. Now, whenever a rooster crows, many people pay it no attention. They're going about their business. His crowing was a common thing, and his crowing seemed no doubt a foolish thing at times. I've known people to fuss about a rooster crowing whenever he shouldn't be crowing at the midnight hour or maybe sometimes during the Night he would crow whenever he shouldn't be crowing. And a lot of people are superstitious. If a rooster crawls under the house and crows, they say something's going to happen. Maybe somebody might die in the family. My old grandmother believed that. If you want to get her stirred up, just let a rooster come under, under the house and start crowing underneath that house. And she thought something bad was going to happen. Now this rooster's crowing was not important to a lot of people, but it was important to God it was important to Simon Peter. God knew the rooster would crow. He told him to crow. And they made the statement, I, I'm, I think I'll shoot that rooster. I think I'll tell my wife to put him in the pot Sunday. I, I, I'm tired of this a rooster waking me up at a certain hour of the night. Now the rooster crowed at a given time. He crowed whether he felt like it or not. Now you have a lot of church members, you know, if they don't feel good and 
the wind's blowing a little bit strong, if you got a few drops of rain, a few snowflakes, they're not going to the house of God. But this rooster, he crowed uh, whether he liked the weather or not. If it's raining or sleeting or snowing or hot, he didn't care. He went ahead and crowed. He had a job to do. Now, God's people should be likewise and not let anything hinder you from serving the Lord. He crowed rain or shine. He crowed in season and out of season. He didn't say, well, I'm going to do some crowing, but it's winter time. I think I'll wait till spring. No, sir. The old rooster didn't say, now it's springtime. I think I'll wait till summertime, and then I'll do my crowing. Oh, no. He didn't say, now it's summertime. I'm going to wait till fall, and then I'll let people hear from me. No, sir. That old rooster crowed in the winter. He crowed in the spring. He crowed in the summer, and he crowed in the fall. He was faithful. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Now God wants us to be faithful at all times. Be faithful in reading our Bibles and praying and going to church and doing what we can to the glory of God in season and out of season. We need to preach the word of God when people are being saved. We need to preach it when they're not being saved. We need to feed the flock of God. If all the preachers stopped preaching because nobody were getting saved, then there wouldn't be much preaching going on today. But God said, be instant in season and out of season. Preach the word at all times, whether you see people moving forward or not. Preach the word whether people are joining the church or not. Preach the word whether sinners are there or not. Preach the word of God. That's a preacher's responsibility. He's to preach at all times. Then number five, now this old rooster job was not poplar. How many people do you ever hear say, now that's an old poplar rooster there? Because listen at him crow. He's real poplar around here. I've never heard anybody brag on a rooster being poplar. There have been some maybe looked a little better than others, but they were not bragged on by being poplar there in the barnyard. You know, you got to have uh, people that love God, that's faithful, and uh, whether people brag on them or not, they need to do the job of God. They need to do what God wants them to do. And this, uh, this uh, rooster, he was not popular. Now, he woke people up early every morning. That's many a rooster that's got a good cussing out. Of course, he didn't, he didn't hear it. But the farmer on the inside of the house uh, started cussing because a rooster woke him up. Now, he wasn't popular in that respect. But he had a job to do. He says, it's about time for me to wake up these hens around here. Wake up the other chickens in the barnyard and it's time to crow. Now that rooster had a set time to crow early in the morning before daylight. That is his job and he was on the job. And he didn't have to set an alarm clock to tell him it's time to crow. He knew it was time to crow and at that set time he began to crow and he woke a lot of people up. His job was to crow and crow loud. He wasn't to be a little squeaky kind of a rooster that you couldn't hear him just, on, just only, only in the hen house. He was to crow loud enough to wake up every hen, every chicken in the barnyard, wake the old farm up, wake his wife up, wake the cows up, cats and dogs, and wake them all up. That is his job. He was to crow, and when he crowed, brother, he ran back and let her go. He crowed real loud, and he wasn't popular. Now he crowed whether they liked it or not. Now he made a lot of people mad at him, but that didn't bother him. I don't know any rooster that seemed to be disturbed because somebody became angry at his loud crowing. Not a one. Now he crowed, uh, and he didn't crow just because um, he wanted to be successful and do a better job than others. He just wanted to do his job. And he crowed a lot of time at the success of others. You may say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, when the old mother hen laid an egg, the rooster crowed about it. Well, that was success to mother hen. She laid the egg, and... The rooster, he crowed about it. Now, that was his job. He encouraged old mother hen. He said, I'm glad you laid that egg. And, and he just crowed and crowed. And so he crowed at success of others. Now, we ought to praise others and, and um, encourage others and compliment others when they do a good job. We shouldn't be jealous and say, well, that person can do a job, but I'm not going to let him know he can do that job. You ought to give people flowers while they're alive. Don't wait to die and place a few on their grave. Give them to them while they're alive, while they can smell them. Dead people can't smell flowers. Give them some so they can smell them while they're alive. And so that old rooster crowed when that hen laid an egg. 
And he didn't care who heard him or who saw him. And then again, the old rooster did his job well. He did the best he could do. He didn't argue about it and say, well, I can't crow as loud as that old rooster over here at Farmer Brown's. And I don't think I'll do any crowing. No, he did the best he could. And that's all that God asks of you is to do the best you can. God doesn't ask you to do something you can't do. Now this rooster crowed at the right time. And he crowed so Simon Peter could hear him. God said to that old rooster, he said, now I want you to crow. I want you to crow good and loud. There's a preacher in here, an apostle. And he's been following me for about three and a half years. And he stood in there and denied that he is my disciple. And I told him that he would do that before you crow. And said, now I want you to really crow. I want you to let him know about it. And that rooster did that job. He obeyed God. He did exactly what God wanted him to do. And he crowed whether people liked it or not or whether they bragged on him or not. Now, a rooster don't care whether you brag on him or not if he, if he crows real loud or doesn't crow loud. That doesn't bother him. He has a job to do and he's going to crow anyhow. And God's people ought to do what they can for God. If somebody brags on them well and good, if they don't well and good, go ahead and do the job anyhow. Over here in Reedsville, North Carolina, many years ago, preacher said they had an old set in here and worse than he ever saw to try to set. You know how to uh, set a hen, don't you? I've seen my mother do it, old hen go on the nest and that's a sign, put some eggs under me. I want to hatch out some chickens. My mother kept her eyes on those old hens because she wanted some more little chicks hatched out. And the old mother hen had gone on the nest. She'd sit there and bring the eggs here. I'm waiting on you to bring me some eggs. My mother would go out there and she'd take some eggs and put them under that hen. But over in North Carolina, this old hen was a worry. What she wanted to set seemed like too often. And the, the mother down the home didn't want the old hen to set. So she just went out. And took all the eggs out from under the old hen. And she just sat there anyhow. And she threw off the nest. She crawled back on and sat there anyway. And so she went out there and put some rocks in the nest. While that hen just sat on them rocks. Just like his eggs. She sat there anyhow. She's going to set. She's determined to set. She said, well, I'll just fix you, sister. And she went out there and took those rocks out. And put some real sharp spikes in that nest. And you know that devil's hen stood up and saw it anyhow. She sure did. And so she just wouldn't get off the nest. She just stayed right there. She determined that she was going to set and she had to, she had to stand up to set. Now you need some people like that to do in God's work. You need them to be willing to do it regardless what the devil thinks about it, has to say about it. Do the work of God anyhow. And so the old hen said anyway. Now we mentioned the old rooster. I think I'll just leave him alone for a few minutes. I've said enough about him. Let me mention the old mother hen. You know, we appreciate the old mother hen. Have you ever watched one out in the barnyard? As a little boy, I've watched them. And so I've seen them do some strange things. Exactly what they call them. That's what is known as the mother hen will give that distress call. And she'll do that when there's a dark cloud coming up. Mother hen will give that distress call and those baby chicks will come running. And she'll get them under the house or in the in hen house or someplace out of the rain because that dark stormy cloud is coming up. Those baby chicks knows that distress call. Not only that, she has a hawk call. If she sees a hawk coming near, she knows exactly what that hawk is after. He's wanting to snatch up one of her baby chicks. I've seen him do that many times. A little boy come diving down and pick up a little chick and take off. But old mother here will give that hawk call. And when she gives the hawk call, those baby chicks will come running to her and hide under her wings or get away from that hawk. They know that call. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, the devil as a roaring lion walked about seeking whom he may devour. Now when the devil is walking around seeking whom he may devour, God may give you the hawk call. God may warn you to flee the devil. The Bible says flee from him, flee the devil, and God may give you that warning call, and you know it's a call from God to do something about it. Then there comes to the sheltering call. There comes a time whenever mother hen wants her baby chicks to come and get under her wings, and she'll give them a sheltering call. Now this is a call to come and hide and hide under her wings because danger is near. And they know that sheltering call. 
Now Jesus tells us to come unto him. Cast all your care upon him because he careth for you. God gives us the sheltering call. And when God gives you that sheltering call and you don't come and do what God tells you to do, you're going to get caught out there and the devil will give you a fit. In Psalms chapter 17, verses 8 and 9, it says, Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. That's what David said. David said, Lord, I want you to hide me under the shelter of your wings. God wants to hide you under the shelter of his wings. And he'll do that. In Psalms chapter 61 and verse 3. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. And the reason a lot of God's children get caught out here and get into trouble. Is because they don't get under the sheltered wings of God. God says, come under my sheltered wings and I'll protect you from the devil. He's moving around as a rowing lion and he'll get you if you're not careful. And then, of course, there comes the following call. Now, when the storm is past, the mother hen gives the following call. See, the storm comes, she protects her babies. And the hawk comes, she protects her babies. She'll fight till she dies for them chicks when that hawk comes around. She gets them in the hen house. She'll get them under the house, under the shelter, and she protects them. But there comes another call. After she's protected them from the enemy, there comes the following call. And she begins to cluck, and those little baby chicks that come following the mother hen. You can see her walking along. She'll scratch here and dig up a few little worms and seed, and those little chicks will pick it up, and you can hear them as they pick it up and sing and carry on their conversation and she'll scratch some more and they'll dig up and pick up some more worms. They're following her in the green pastures. Now God said for you to follow him in the green pastures and beside the still waters. So we're to follow him in the green pastures and we're to follow him in service. As the little baby chicks followed mother hen, so we must follow the Lord. And then that's the following call, but here's the feeding call. You know, our God gives us a feeding call. Our Lord gives us a feed to eat or a, a food to eat from the word of God. In John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now that's a feeding call. As the mother hen calls her babies to her, she scratched up some seeds, she scratched up some worms, She's found a few bugs and she knows what they like. And she starts calling and all of them will start running as fast as they can to get that food. On the Lord's day, whenever the sun rises on Sunday morning, you need to start getting ready as quick as you can. Get the children all fixed up. Get ready. Get in that automobile. Get to the house of God as quick as you can. Be there starting time. Have your children in Sunday school. Because the feeding call has come. And you need to come and feed upon God's word. Your pastor's prayed. He's studied. He's prepared the message. He's gotten the food together for you. He set the table. And he says, I want you to come and get it. Now, if you don't come and get it, it's your own fault. Any little baby chick that failed to come and get the food that mother fixed for it will soon come to a place where it'll be so weak and so helpless until it fall by the wayside and maybe soon perish away. There's a lot of church members today sitting right at home. They fail to come for the feeding call. They fail to come and get and eat at the table. The preacher set for them. And they're weak. They can stay at home just as easy as they can come to church much easier than that. Beloved, they're weak. They're not feeding on the word of God as they should. You need to come for the feeding call. Jesus is that water of life. He says in John chapter 4 and verse 14, But whosoever drinketh the water I shall give him shall never thirst, but I shall give him what I shall give him, a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. And he said, Desire the bread, desire the water, and desire the milk of God's word. When a little baby, a small baby, refuses to nurse and take, take the milk that it might grow and develop, something's going to happen to that child. You know that. But when it begins to take the milk and begins to grow, it won't be long until it'll be eating other things. It'll be growing and become strong and be a fine young man, a fine young lady. 
There's a lot of church members that's been babies for 40 years. And they just don't grow. They don't feed. They don't seek out the word of God. They don't bother about coming to church. They just don't witness. They don't pray like they should. And they're not growing like they should. God wants you to feed. Those baby chicks run to the mother hen. And she digs them up some food. They eat that. She digs up more. And they eat that. And then there comes a warmth call. There's a time whenever it's cold and those little baby chicks needs to be warmed up. Old Mother Hen will give that warmth call and those babies will come running. Underneath the old Mother Hen's wings is a very warm spot. Very warm. Have you ever picked up a chicken and just felt how warm his body is under his wings? Well, Mother Hen will call her babies in. There's a little frost out there and their feet's getting cold and they need a little warmth. And she'll give them that warmth call and they'll come running in and she'll spread those warm wings over them. And they're just as warm as they can be. After a while, one of them will stick that little old head out and peep around. And then they'll go to sleep and begin to peep. And there they are under Mother Hen's wings, just as warm as they can be. Mother Hen warmed them up. That's exactly what God wants you to do on the Lord's day. Come to the house of God that you can be warm spiritually. That you can fellowship. That you can enjoy the word of God. And be made warm. So when you leave here... You'll be warm spiritually. God wants you like that. I've seen my mother warm up little chickens in the wintertime. Maybe something happened to the old mother hen. And I've seen my mother, God bless her sweet memory, she's in heaven rejoicing today. And she'd go out and she'd say, uh, Virgil, help me catch some of these little chickens. They're cold. And let me warm them up. And we'd catch those baby chicks and bring them in. And my mother would let this, uh, the oven door down on the stove. It wouldn't be hot enough to cook them, you know. But... It'd just be kind of warm in there. And she'd put those baby chicks in a little old box and put a little cloth over that box and set those little things. They'd be half froze to death in there. And then in a, in a minute or so, you'd see that cloth begin to move around and it begin to warm up. And you'd see one of them stick his head out and then another would stick his wing out, another stick his foot out. And the first thing, you know, out of that stove would come those chickens all over the kitchen. There's warm and, man, they're feeling good now. They got all warmed up. And mama say, now son, let's catch these chickens. They're all right now. They're warmed up. Now you need to come to God's house and get warmed up. A lot of God's people like a bunch of Eskimos sitting out there in the radio land now just froze to death. They need to be in God's house where they get warmed up and thawed up to the glory of God. And then there comes a night call. Nighttime comes. The sun's going down. Mother hen begins to call. She gives that night call. She says, children... It's time to go now to the chicken cup, and it's night, and I want you to come on in while you're safe. Get under my wings and rest during the night. And mother, he and her bring her babies in at night so they can rest. There's a night call for you, and God wants you to rest and relax in him and meditate upon the things of God. Many years ago, out in the western state, there was a prayer fire broke out out there, and some of the people out wandering around, watching the scene where the fire had burned over the, the broom sage and they were just wandering around and they saw what they thought to be an old burnt uh, broom sage. And one of the men just thought he just kicked it and he kicked the thing over and it was not a broom sage at all. It was a big mother hen. When she saw that prairie fire coming, she called all of her babies under her wings and then she hovered over them. And that fire came and burned her to death but every one of those little chicks were alive. They came running out when they kicked Mother Hen over. Those baby chicks came running out. She gave her life for her babies. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. He gave his life on the cross that we might live forever. Hover under his wings. Draw up close to him and let him take care of you. You'll be glad that you did. Thank you. You've listened well. Stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray that you'll take this message we have learned from the old barnyard rooster and mother hen and the little chicks today. You tell us you'd, you'd take us under your wings and your protectors. You tell us in your word, our Father, you'll feed us and watch over us and give us a warning sign when the enemy comes. And thank you for that, dear Father. Use the message today and speak to every heart in this building and speak to many people. And the radio listening audience, I pray in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us.
on the piano while she plays. If you're in this building, you're unsaved, or you're backslidden, or you want to join this church, or for any reason God wants you to come forward, you obey the Lord. That's all I ask you to do. I did what God wanted me to do. I gave you the message. Now it's up to you to respond. Would you respond while we wait for just a moment? God is speaking. Would you come? whether or not God's speaking to your heart I don't know it's up to you to do something about it maybe you need a church home maybe you need to come back to God maybe you need to get saved maybe you've been out in the cold too long away from mother here and you need to get under our wings how about it while we wait 